Hello YouTube, another rainy day here in the Northeast, hoping to get outside with this. Uh, this is a gun I picked up recently. This is the Smith & Wesson New Departure Safety Hammerless. It's a long name uh, for this particular gun. And these guns were quite popular in their day. And this was part of the Smith & Wesson Break Open Revolver line. That started not just with the, the popularity of the Smith & Wesson number 3 Schofield, but also the Smith & Wesson number 2, which was a small frame 32 caliber gun and 32 rimfire and 32 centerfire. And also the Smith & Wesson, what they call the one and a half. And even back to the number one, although those were more of a tip-up frame, and they found that at the engineers at Smith & Wesson that the break-open design like this was more practical. And these guns, the first double action guns that were this size, um, were they actually called a double action model. They were 32 and 38 Smith and Wesson, and they were designed in 1880. And then in 1887, they came out with this. And you can see it is a true double action only revolver. People think that just now that 38 uh, double action revolvers and your double action only guns were a fairly new concept. They weren't. This design goes back well more than 100 years. But the one thing that really sets us apart is this grip safety. That was a very radical uh, piece of technology for 1887. And of course these revolvers break open so you can load quickly and eject the, eject the empty shells. And they made these guns for a long time. They started in 1887. They didn't stop making these until 1940. So you're talking a, a very long run. And that was well after you had semi-auto pistols come out. You had um, your more your break open or your swing open cylinder designs, your hand ejectors from Smith and Wesson. They made these right up until World War II. And these were in 32 Smith & Wesson and 38 Smith & Wesson. And this one, of course, is 38 Smith & Wesson. And a lot of people think that when they look at this, they see 38 Smith & Wesson, that that's 38 Special. It's not. 38 Smith & Wesson is its own caliber. And I'll show you what happens when you try to put a 38 Special shell in the cylinder. That is as far as it goes. You cannot load a 38 Smith & Wesson Special into a 38 Smith & Wesson revolver. And all the early revolvers would even say the difference of 38 Smith & Wesson and 38 Smith & Wesson Special. And the one thing nice thing about this gun, and again, it's, you can see it's unloaded, 5-shot revolver. These were a great pocket gun, by the way, which is their whole design. They were designed as a concealed carry pocket gun. But, you know, he, this gun here, look at the, how nice. Double action on this gun is very smooth. And the lockup for a gun, this gun, this serial number puts it right around between 1906 and 1907. Which, you're talking a gun well over 100 years old. But the design, you know, is you're going almost... You're well past 120 years old now. Moving towards 130. And it's a wonderful design. It really is. And it's it's amazing how well built this gun is. And it's a little it was designed as just what it was. It was a small pocket gun. You know, for personal defense. And of course, Smith and Wesson made these, and then you had your you basically your cheaper copies, your Ivor Johnsons, your Hopkins and Allen, US Arms. And not to be confused with the new U.S. arms that came out later. But you had companies, European companies make these. Some of your Spanish companies made these. and But they are totally inferior to the Smith & Wesson design. The Smith & Wesson guns are really a much better design. And they work much better. Uh, I've seen some people say that the Ivor Johnsons were equal to... The Smith and Wessons, and they don't know what they're talking about. Those are the Mick experts out there that, you know, don't know any better and think they do. But these guns, wonderful design, wonderful revolver, and this particular one, I have shot this gun, 
And at 10 yards, the groups are surprisingly are surprisingly good. And, of course, 38 Smith & Wesson is not a great personal defense round. But you've also got to think of the time it was designed. This was designed in 1887. There was no 9mm. There was no 357 Magnum. There was no 38 Special. No 45 ACP. All of your rounds were small black powder rounds. 32 Smith & Wesson, 38 Smith & Wesson. Yes, you had your larger calibers like 45 Colt, but you didn't have them in a small compact handgun. This was what you had. And these were very work worked very well and were very popular for a long time. Um, would I carry this for personal offense? Yeah, it's it's outdated to be sure, but if you could find decent bullets in 38 Smith & Wesson besides lead round nose, yeah. I mean, it's it's not a great round, but it certainly is better than, say, uh, 32 ACP. Uh, it's better than a pocket 22 by far. And it would do the job, and I'm sure it has. But, you know, it, for this is more of a gun for its time. But... It's it's amazing again how well designed this was, and it was just it was it was something that was ahead of its day, to see something like this with the grip safety and the double action only. This gun's sole purpose was for personal defense and for being a concealed carry piece. And again, we don't think of that that gun makers were thinking of that far ahead, that far back. They really were. So hopefully YouTube, I can get some more out to the range with this and, and get a bit more done with it and a few other guns I have that I'm working with. So that being said, YouTube, have a good day.